and we're back. Been a while, but I'm gonna start off with a bit of a bang. So what I've got for you today is a recent session on our Gears 3D system here at Archerfield, combined with Trackman, that's really gonna illustrate how important it is to understand that body swing connection. So what I mean by that is how this individual's body influences technique. Um, it's just something that can be often hidden if you're not looking for it. So with the help of the technology, with a little bit of experience from little old me, let's have a look and see exactly what was going on and what problems it caused. Okay, so here we are in Gears Land and the part of this individual's body that we're really gonna focus in on, obviously as well as the club and the ball, is his pelvis action. So this gent was really struggling with his contact. So if I enter stage right, we can see that, you know, pretty quick in terms of uh, clubhead speed. So his clubhead speed is up at 90 miles an hour, just sling that in there for us. And we can see here he's got a bit of a flare to the right. And I think the major thing was, is considering this is a seven iron, a little bit shallow. So when he really caught, he really spoke about poor contact. So poor strike location with his irons. And you can see here, you know, low points, 3.3 inches ahead, which is a little bit shallow. So, especially with his speed. So when we actually delved into the gears data, we could see here that when we have a look at his pelvis sway number, which is the lateral motion of his pelvis, a little bit of Saturday night fever going on there. We can see here that his actual lower body was really swaying away from the target here quite a lot. So tour players, we'd like to see kind of within an inch. And what that was doing was that was causing his pelvis to get a little bit too much side bend. So a little bit much kind of tilt towards the ground. And then that was leading to his upper body. Basically, if we have a look behind, we can see he gets into this reverse spine position here. So what happens then, one, it's a bit of a risk of injury if I'm honest, but also what happens there is that the flip reverse, as he comes down into his impact, you'll see his lower body again moves laterally, keeps going forward, but up the upper body starts to come back. So um, as you probably can guess, hitting down on the ball is pretty tricky. And again, pelvis sway numbers up at 6.9 inches. So that's a pretty significant amount. Um, so it was really important, I think, we needed to just tidy up or reduce this lower body or this pelvis sway during the session. And yeah, that way it'll then facilitate better strike, more downward at attack angle, um, hopefully a bit more rotation as well. But let's have a look and see what we did. Okay, so now we know exactly what's happening, we need to try and change it. So the first port of call was to check how this gent's lower body and his core like to move. So first thing I did is I did the TPI disassociation screen, which is basically put your arms across your chest, see if you can move your lower body without moving the upper body. He really struggled with that. And he also struggled with disassociating his upper body against his lower body. So straight away we can start to say, okay, well, if he's struggling to do that, then he's probably gonna want to do something else. If he doesn't like to rotate and turn his lower body, he's maybe gonna to want to tilt. Next thing we checked was his lower quarters as well. So in particular, when we did this, it was actually checking to see how well or easily he could turn into his trail or his right lower quarter or his hip or his, you know, basically rotating the pelvis right and also going left. So pros, typically we like to see 60. He was about 20. So struggled turning into that. All of a sudden, we're now starting to get a bit of a picture. We check the other side, all of a sudden, same result. Didn't like to turn this way. Fortunately, like to turn this way. So armed with that information, we kind of needed to do a bit of a workaround. So hopefully you can start to picture the fact that, okay, he didn't want to turn into that. So, all right, so straight away, he's going to want to go this way and this way. And that maybe accounts for the, you know, 10 inches of pelvis sway versus turning. So. Working around that, very simply, what did we do? Okay, so to work around the disassociation, you can actually let the lower body or the heels come up a little bit. So allowing that move to, you know, allowing the heel to come up allows that bit of rotation and actually getting everything to work together was actually the key here. So a little exercise I like to do here, away from hitting balls, a bit of a warm up was to actually get the ball kind of in front, in front of his chest and just facilitate a nice rotation so he wasn't swaying off the ball, but then I've got this kind of ball still on my chest, turning, reach out, and then make a downswing. So that idea there, so we're there turning, 
resisting so everything kind of goes together and then reach and then downswing. So that was the first part. That was a little bit something you could do at home. Then when it came to hitting balls, really simply, what I suggested was just hitting shots with the feet together with a slightly kind of flared you know, foot position. So what that flared foot position did was really allow him to utilize his external kind of lower quarter there, but not to put too much pressure on the internal. And then also allowing him or getting him to go with a little bit, you know, feet a bit close together, that then discourages the lateral because it, you have to rotate, right, if your feet are a bit close together. So the idea being here was just having the feet a little bit close together, flaring them out, think Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, and then just hit some shots there, feeling as though everything's turning and moving together. And then the cue really when it came to ball flight was very simply hit squeezy, kind of punchy shots. So for him, he really liked the punchy draw, so we went, Feet pretty close together, flare them out, Donald Duck, punchy draw. Let's see the results. And here we are. So what we've got is the gent earlier on, and then this is the gent doing the little exercise. And the first thing I think it's important to show you is that just by doing those little exercises, we can really see the difference in the pelvis sway. So you can see significantly changes that amount of sway that we've got going on there so we've gone from 2.8 inches down to 0.2 we've still got a little bit of this reverse spine so when we have a look at that so if i have a look here at the kind of torso angles and we kind of take away uh, these other lines here so typically if I, we have a bit of a geek out we'll have a look at the graph so typically we want to see zero to at most maybe kind of six six degrees of kind of bend at the top so we've actually taken that down pretty significantly so you can see there we've gone from uh, 15 to basically one or two so a lot safer and as well what's happened here is when we have a look at the kind of side bend number so when we take these away and um, we have a look at your, the pelvis side bend so we're now facilitating less tilt more turn so typically we want about 10 degrees of pelvis tilt at the top of the backswing um, yeah we're nailing that pretty nicely and then on the way down we can see here that as he kind of turned through we've still got you know probably too much um, sway going on but you know the key here is we were reducing the amount so when we have a look here at the actual impact numbers you can see we've gone down from seven inches to 4.7 so um, heck of a you know heck of an improvement in a very short space of time and the real key here was actually well what was the actual ball flight doing so when we have a look at um you know his trackman data so if we wheel that in you know stage right we can see here this is before um and then when we actually have a look at the after or should we say when he's got his feet together um let's have a look at his tracer so one straight away you know, that's nice and tidy. He's got this kind of nice squeezy draw, obviously swinging a bit slower, but look at that attack angle. So all of a sudden we've really improved or got a slightly more descending blow, really improving that ball flight and his contact and yeah, reducing the risk of injury. Well, there you go. I think that's a great illustration of how important it is to delve that little bit deeper into how somebody's body likes to move and how that might influence the technique. And as we can see there, really improved his ball flight, going to play better golf and also reduce the risk of injury. So, you know, that's a triple win for, in my book. So um, that just leaves me to say thank you ever so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel for more. I'm going to promise, I'm, I promise I'll try and do a little bit more, uh, just all depending on schedule. But let me know if you liked it. Let me know if there's anything in particular you want to tune into. Thanks for watching. See you soon.